Good morning. I am Pastor Eunhye Che of Glenview United Methodist Church. On behalf of the congregation, I welcome all of you who are making this worshiping community in person and online. I want to look around your neighbors and you can wave to each other or you can bow from deep down your heart. And even you are at home worshiping online, I want to look around anybody in your home and say, in the name of God, I welcome you and I love you. This beautiful summer Sunday morning, it is our privilege. How exciting it is that we gather together as a worshiping and faith community online and in, faith, in person. God is with us and we love God and we worship God. Let us open our worship today with the opening prayer. I will lead it. You Holy One, only you are our joy. You are the ground of our believing, the spring in our hoping, and the happiness in our loving. You are the reason why we are here and the purpose that will later take us on our journey. Help us to make the most of this time, reaching deeply and rising high in bountiful worship. Through Jesus, our guide and savior, amen. It is now time for the kids and everyone else to listen to the children's sermon. So in a, we're getting ready to go back to school, right? So I thought it would be appropriate to talk about who some people would say is one of the best teachers ever. Kids, do you have any idea who that might be? You can just, I, you're, I know you're so far away. Just shout it out if you think you know. Um, your mom, aw, that is so true, but you know what, that's not, I wasn't gonna do a sermon on your mom this morning. But that's a great answer, that is super sweet. How about Miss Emily, what do you think? No. Mom, no, okay. Well, we're in church, who do you think might be one of the greatest teachers we talk about in church? Any ideas? 
Maddie, oh, that's so sweet too, but no, she's not here today. We're not going to talk about her. Yeah. God, yeah, and, and specifically Jesus, right? So many people think that Jesus is a fantastic teacher. But even Jesus being a fantastic teacher, his disciples sometimes didn't know what he was talking about, right? So one day, Jesus says to his disciples, you know what? What comes out of your mouth is way more important than what goes into it. And his disciples were confused about that. Anybody know why his disciples might be confused about that? I'll try again. Yeah, Anna. Can you say that again? That yeah, he, they don't get yeah, he they didn't get what he meant. See, at that time, and even some people still today, they had to eat certain foods and they had to eat in, in a certain way, and maybe even in a. Um, prepare it in a certain way and eat it at a certain time and they thought that those things would help make them clean because they thought that that's what God wanted them to do right and what Jesus was saying is he said you know what basically what goes into your mouth goes to your stomach and then goes to a sewer someplace right but what comes out of your mouth that's super important because that's showing what you are feeling in your heart right but there's more to the story on that because Jesus knew words were important, right? So words can be very helpful. They can make people feel happy and welcome and loved and capable, but they can also be very hurtful, right? And really unkind words can just feel terrible. And like I said, there was more to the story. So when Jesus was talking to his disciples, a woman came up to them and she wasn't from the area. They didn't really know her. She wasn't like them. And she asked for Jesus' help. And she said, Jesus, my daughter is really not doing well. Can you help me? And his disciples said, you know what, Jesus, you have so many lost sheep right now that you're trying to care for. Send her away. Kids, what do you think he was talking about with lost sheep? Was he talking about the cute little furry animals? Hmm. I see a head shaking no. So we know he's not talking about the animals. But what was he talking about? Maybe he was talking about people who weren't making good decisions. Maybe he was talking about people that were saying unkind words or not maybe understanding what he was talking about, right? So Jesus didn't send the woman away. In fact, after a couple times of this woman from a different area that asked for his help, she actually knelt down before Jesus. And that was really important because kneeling before someone, especially in that time, was like a sign of respect and honor, knowing that that person had great power or great authority. And in this case, this woman knew Jesus had great power to heal and help his, her daughter. And she also said, you know what, even the family dogs enjoy crumbs. And I think she understood even better what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples with what comes out of your mouth is important. So she probably, from a different area, maybe she felt like she wasn't as important, or she wasn't, she was kind of disregarded or thrown away a little bit. And her message was, even someone like me, right, understands that you have power and hope and that the hope of Jesus is for all people. It doesn't matter if we're not from the same area. It's for all people. And I think that was a pretty important message. And you know what? Jesus praised her for that and said, you have so much more faith and you understand this, right? So a few weeks ago, I had challenged the kids with a couple different things, like going out of their way to be kind, going out of their way to help, be helpful, and doing as many helpful things as you were old, right, in one week. This week, I'm going to challenge you. I want you to look for chances to say kind things and have kind things come out of your mouth, right? So you make others feel better when they leave you than when they came to you. Can we do that? I see a couple kids nodding. Awesome, awesome. Okay, would you pray with me, please? Dear Jesus, thank you for all those amazing messages and lessons that you teach us every single day. Please help us to be kind and loving to each other in our words and our actions. In your name we pray. Amen.
The Old Testament reading is from Hosea chapter 11, 1 through 11. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more they were called, the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to the Baals, and they burned incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms. But they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt, and will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? A sword will flash in their cities. It will devour their false prophets and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me, even though they call me God Most High. I will by no means exalt them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again. For I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come against their cities. They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come tumbling from the west. They will come from Egypt, trembling like sparrows, from Assyria, fluttering like doves. I will settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. And now the gospel reading from Luke chapter 15, 20 through 24. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, <clears throat> and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you, against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Would you please join me in a prayer? Let us pray. O oh God, our Father and Mother, you come to us so near and touch our hearts and ears and eyes, and we can see your presence, we can hear your voice, and we feel your heart filled with love and sorrow, and we change our lives and hearts and return to you, O oh God. Thank you for your calling, amen. About two, three days ago, I got an email from one of our members saying that, in her email, saying that during this pandemic, she got bored, she got really bored, and began to remember what she learned when she was young. One of them is memorizing the names of 39 books in the Old Testament in order. And then she tried to remember to re-memorize. And she did that like nothing. And she was so happy and proud that she re-memorized them just like nothing. What a wonderful way living through this miserable pandemic and finding joy. In the month of August, I introduce to you several prophets in the Old Testament from 39 books, there are many books of prophets. They were sent, those prophets were sent to God's people when they were in national and communal crisis. 
I believe we can learn something from their prophecies during our own national and communal crisis. So far, we met Jeremiah and Hosea. Today, I want to mention prophet Hosea again because the metaphors in his prophecies change from a marital relationship, from that metaphor, to parenting, parental relationship later. I appreciate deeply Hosea's prophecies because they are grounded in real daily life situations to show our daily relationships, in our daily life relationships with God. Some members who heard the sermon last Sunday told me they were not, they didn't feel comfortable with the image of God in Hosea's prophecies because it was different from what they thought of God. So today I bring two images, not just one from Hosea, two images of God as a loving father, one from Hosea in Old Testament and the other from the Gospel of Luke, the father of the prodigal son. Maybe after you heard Bible readings, maybe you already decided your mind that you like the Father in the New Testament because that Father image is more familiar and comforting for you. But I beg you to stay open your hearts and ears to the Holy Spirit who speaks both old and new languages. We need to be humble to hear both languages rather than stick to the one language we may feel knowledgeable and comfortable. The Holy, the Holy Spirit speaks many languages. Our knowledge does not take us to the heart of God, only the Holy Spirit does. And we need to be humble to the Holy Spirit's presence, languages, and guidance. The image of God in today's reading from the book of Hosea is quite tender, with Yahweh recalling Israel as a young child called out of Egypt in the Exodus. Most of you have experienced holding your newborn baby or grandbaby with a tender heart. That moment is one of rare opportunities that we understand what God's love might look like and feel like. In those moments, our hearts are filled with pure love. Like a loving parent, God loves us even after we went astray from God's way. But we never, we never imagine how much it breaks God's heart and even provoke anger in God's heart. There is a deep sadness of a parent in verse 2 saying, the more I called them, the more they went from me. A sense of deep, deep anguish from this deep betrayal pervades the whole passage. In Hosea's voice, God says, it was I who taught Israel to walk. I took them up in my arms. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I hope that you feel how tenderly and at the same time, at the same time, how bitterly God remembers his parenting days. Then the voice changes as if Yahweh is all the more angry for reflecting on the love he has lavished on his people. Like a spawned parent, his anger kindles. He foretells the people's return to the captivity with Assyria to be their king because they refused to return to God. Violence and sword prevail. 
prevails in their cities because of their disobedience. In verse 7, God said, God said and refrain voice recurs. My people are turning away from me. That's God's sad voice. Here we feel the sadness of God who lost the relationship with his own children. Then in verse 8, the tone shifts suddenly again as Yahweh returns to a tender view of Israel. He says, how can I give up you, Israel? My heart recalls with me from the, intent, from the intended judgment. My compassion grows warm and tender. God's heart changes again and again with his people. And God's emotions are all over the map, everywhere. They are changing and caring. And God doesn't hide or deny his chaotic feelings. He says them all. God is vulnerable and honest. But you may not feel comfortable with God's vulnerability because you may believe God should be transcendental and unchanging. So, I introduce you another image of God as a parent from the Gospel of Luke. Here the father has a rebellious, disrespectful, stubborn, and strayed son. The son took his family inheritance and left home. He's like Israelites in Hosea's time who went astray from God's way. But this father of the prodigal son doesn't raise his voice in anger, frustration, or sadness. This father doesn't cry or weep. This father doesn't change his mind. A famous theologian, Henry Nouwen, wrote a book with this parable. He goes on and on about the amazing and unchanging love of God. And a famous artist, Rembrandt, painted a gorgeous painting with this image, titled The Return of the Prodigal Son. The art is in the State Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia. I love this art because the wretched clothes of the sun contrast dramatically with the glorious warm red robe that the father is in it. It shows all that there are ho that we are hopeless, wretched sinners. And God's love is transcendental, unchanging, almighty, and glorious, warm and red and glorious. His power of love and forgiveness is beyond us. Many people go to St. Petersburg just to, to see this one art, one painting. We learned this parable in our childhood Sunday school and heard about it many times in many different pastors' sermons. We know it and we love it. But I want to ask you, have you ever experienced unchanging and absolute love from your parents, from your own parents, when you grew up in your original family? My mom loved us, but she cried often because parenting was hard and her children were disappointing. Her emotions with us were all over the map everywhere, warmth and forgiveness to anger and bitterness. That's parental love that I know. As a parent, do you love your own children with an unchanging and absolute love? Let's be honest about it. I don't and I cannot. We experience all kinds of emotions with our own children. But people say that God is a heavenly father and God's love is different from any human parent's love and we cannot compare to. But that way, 
to be honest with you, that way we put God in heaven up there and we keep the safe distance from God. God is over there, we are down here, and we don't need to know God in our daily earthly life. And we don't need to feel or engage in God's love in human terms. But once, once we engage in God's love as if God has feelings and emotions like a human parent, it may change us. That's the point of Hosea's message. Feel the heart of God and change your life and your heart. In Hosea's time, when God's people were in crisis, God came to them near. And God cried out to them in human voices to come back to God's way of life. In the same sense, God in the parable of the prodigal son, that God comes out of his house, his dwelling place in heaven, and waits for his son's return. And he sees when his son comes far over there, and the father sees him and just runs for him. Any crisis is an opportunity to see the presence of God near to us and to hear God's voice filled with deep emotions for us. And finally, to come back to God's way of life. If God is honest with us, not holding back God's chaotic feelings, we can be honest with God as who we are. As God comes out his dwelling place to meet us, we can come out our comfortable and safe bubbles to meet God where God is. In the end of Hosea's prophecy, God says, they will walk after the Lord who rose like a lion. When he rose, his children will come trembling from the west. We like to see God in the image of a lion, the strong almighty. And God says that you will come out trembling and follow that lion. Through this pandemic crisis, I hope and pray that we will walk after the Lord, coming trembling from our old ways of life, which were seeking for protection, false peace, and security. It is an opportunity to learn and follow God's way of life. It may sound, it may feel dangerous, unsafe, but this is the time. This is an opportunity. We follow the lion, our God, and change our lives. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, you are so near to us, but we close our eyes. We refuse to see you. You cry and weep, but we close our ears and refuse to hear your voice. And your saving hand is so near to us, but we keep ourselves inside of our safe bubbles, and we don't hold your hands. Oh God, forgive us. Help us. Hear your voice, feel your heart, and coming out trembling from our old ways of life, seeking false peace, hearing false prophets' voices, seeking prosperity, speaking old one language. Oh God, Help us coming out from that old way of life and follow you, feeling your engaging in your crying voice, 
We remember people who are suffering during this pandemic with depression, anxiety disorder, bipolar, and so many names of mental health. They are trembling and feebling. They need your voice and they need our kind words, encouraging them, supporting them. Oh God, help us to call them, find them where they are, call them, encourage them, and let them hear your love. So many people are suffering right now with all kinds of mental illness. And, O oh God, let your light shine upon us, that we bring that light to every corner of our community, our own families. And now, in silence, we pray for people in our heart. In confidence that we hear God's voice and God hear our prayers, we join in the prayer Jesus taught all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we give our offerings and tithes and gifts. Uh, if you worship at home, you can give online. Go to church website. And when you leave using side aisles, you can leave your offerings in the basket. And our change offering, change sounds so small, but our big offerings also go to Just Harvest this month and next month too. Just Harvest, you may see the insert. They do feeding ministry in Rogers Park and Chicago, big gray Chicago land area. I want you to be generous for our neighbors. And now we listen to the second hymn. 